you who are thinking of running for public office, plan to run for public office in a jurisdiction in which the voting is cast for you when you do vote, in a district, then what I'm about to describe to you is very, very important. If those of you who are planning to run for public office or know of somebody who want to help somebody else run for public office, who is planning to run in a, in a district, not in a district, but in a, for a legislature, for representation, and a body that makes laws, legislative laws at any level, and you are elected at large from the entire city, from the entire county, from the entire school district, and there are no individual districts within your jurisdiction, this is also very important to you. Those of you who've done campaigns and want to run campaigns and have worked on campaigns will have done and know that there's a lot of data, there's a lot of information about the potential voters for you as a candidate and for your team as a candidate, right? There's a lot of data. There's data about who's registered to vote in your communities. There's data about citizenship in your communities. There's data about income levels in your community. There's data about education levels in your community. There's a lot of information that allows all of you who are running for office or thinking about running for office to try to gauge, try to understand who your likely voters are, who your likely voters who are you're not going to who are not going to vote for you, and who are the swing voters, who are the independent voters, who are the voters who are in the middle and don't haven't decided yet whether to vote for you or someone else. Well, that information about Partisan, or how many Democrats, independents, Republicans are in your district or in your city when you run for office. All that information, a lot of it is only accessible to you if you're a member of a political party that has access and or the money to pay for a database that's typically contained or maintained by your board of elections that can give you information about, for example, party registration. But a lot of the information as well is available to, be available to you publicly. It's available to you through the census. Now, to get the information to the census is not as easy as just going to www.census.gov. So you say, that's not fast, it'll be easy for me. No? You have to go to page upon page and understand where you're going to go. But the, what I want to tell you this is the following. Redistricting is the process in which los distritos electorales, mejor dicho, Los distritos representativos, the representative legislative districts, those districts have to change. Those lines have to change. But we have to step back and understand that we, somebody already drew the lines. When you decide to run for office in district or on a ward, those lines were already cast. And the decision to make a line one down with one particular avenue is a decision that's a political decision. The decision to stop the line at a river may not be so much of a political decision if your town boundary stops at the river, right? If you're running for office at a higher level, state assembly or state senate, the decision to cross the river into another town or another city could very well be available to you if you're the person who's drawing the lines. But every line drawing exercise, every line drawing exercise is a political exercise. It's a decision that's normally made in nine out of ten cases in the United States by the people who got elected from those districts. It is a decision that's nine out of ten times decided by the people who were elected from those very districts. So it's by definition self-serving. It's by definition survival. It's by definition political future. It's by definition legacy. And it is by definition incumbency. So the power of the incumbent, if you're the elected official who has a say, you have a big advantage in redistricting. If you happen to be an elected official who's a member of the party that's in power, you have an even bigger advantage. So redistricting occurs as a political exercise that yes, it's required by law, but it's a perfect way for political decisions to be made about who gets to get reelected, how you can maximize the reelection of the incumbents, how do you stop challengers, 
And how do you make it more difficult for people who are not in the system to try to get into the system? And that's what the bottom line is for all of you At fin y al cabo, it's a very raw political exercise. And what makes this particular time of year very, very interesting for all of us who work as on consultancies, as people who want to be active in the political process, people who want to run for office, and people like myself who are voting rights attorneys, what makes this period of time very interesting for us is that in the first year of the decade, decade, in cada década, and I've done, this is my fourth time doing this, I did it in the 80s when I came out of school, and every time we get involved, and that period of time is very intense, Year one, two, and three are very intense periods. Redistricting occurs in many of your jurisdictions in the first, second, and third year of the decade. And if you don't have a hand, if you don't get involved in advocating for a redistrict or a districting scheme that helps your community, that helps you, that helps your candidate, that helps your party, whatever you want to help, if you don't do it in the next one, two years from now, you will lose an opportunity to change those districts for the next 10 years. Okay? That's why it's intense now. And that's why you have to learn to understand these concepts now. And that's why you should be involved if you want to shape or help shape the districts. The opportunity, the window of opportunity is ahora.